Hello friends, in this tutorial, I'll be talking about how to add a second standby to an Oracle 19C data guard environment. So I have already covered series of tutorial and this is the sixth tutorial in this particular series. In the first five, we have covered the, we have enabled the two, the primary and standby. And now I will be adding another standby to in the data guard environment. So my my current environment looks like this. So I have got primary and the first standby. Uh, the primary unique name is Oracle DP. The first standby name is Oracle DS. And what I need to do is I need to add a, another standby called Oracle DT third one. So this is the third standby first. Sorry, actually it is the second standby. But this is the P for primary. This is the first standby and this is the second standby or third database in the uh, data guard environment and as I said I have already configured this the data guard broker is enabled and in this tutorial we will be adding this particular database or we will be adding the second standby so what I before before going to the tutorial let me show you that my uh, I'm connecting to my broker and let me show you my configuration and if I show you my configuration you can see that I have got Oracle DP as primary database. So if I just do this Oracle DP as my primary database and Oracle DS as my standby. So if you see Oracle DP as my primary and Oracle DS as my standby and I don't have this particular database. So we need to add the another standby. So when we see then you will see that you, we have two uh, databases at standby with one being primary. Uh, and before moving to the next part, what I want to also show you is how my file parameters looks like. So let me clear this screen and sorry, let me clear this screen and show you show parameter file. Uh, if I do that and you can see that here it is Oracle DP and if I do it on standby, I got Oracle DS and Oracle DP and if I show you my um, log arc config parameter the other parameter the second parameter if I show you that parameter then I have got two databases currently so Oracle DP and Oracle DS at the same time here also you'll find Oracle DS and so I got two databases in one primary currently Oracle DP is primary and Oracle DS is standby as you can see from this Oracle DP is primary and Oracle DS is standby and in this tutorial we will be adding this particular database as a second standby. So what are the steps that we need to do is we will be copying the P file from the primary and we are we will be editing some of the P file parameters. We will be starting the third standby in no mount mode. Then we will be launching the rman active duplication command. When we do the rman active duplication command we will be making sure that primary is connected as target while standby is connected to auxiliary. Then we will be using this particular command rman duplicate target database for standby. Then we will be creating the standby control file. Then we will be setting some of the data guard parameter opposite of the primary. Then we will be starting the MRP and we will be setting up the DG broker start to true. Then we will be adding the standby in the data guard broker configuration. Then we will be setting the log XPT mode to sync for the third standby. We will be configuring the static connect identifier and then we will be enabling the configuration and show configuration. So till if you see here till here the parts whatever I'm doing is a, till here it is restore part. This is starting the data guard and this is at the uh, this is at the broker level. So again this is the Armand duplication or restoring of the standby. This is enabling the data, data guard. And then this part is about doing it in the broker. So let me repeat the steps once again. So we will be copying the P file from primary. We will be starting the database in no mount mode. We will be using rman duplicate target database for standby command to duplicate the primary into standby. We will be creating the standby control file. We will be uh, setting the data guard parameters which are opposite. Then we will be setting the DG broker start to true. And we will be setting this particular parameter to sync. We will be setting the static connect identifier parameter for switchover purposes. 
and we will be enabling the configuration and I'll show you the configuration. So before move before moving to this one, what I'll show is we need to uh, let me clear if there are any leftover. Let me clear. So this is where this is where I will be. Let me go here and show you that uh, absolutely nothing. So there is arc one. So let me show you that and it is also empty. And then there is FRA which is also empty. So what what we need to do now is we I'll show you my LSNR CTL status. So let me do aura ENV and here and show you sorry not this. So let me take this and show you that I have got Oracle DP and Oracle DS currently. So I don't have Oracle DT at all. So let me configure the listener and TNS. So let me configure those two files. Let me configure this listener. So what I'm doing is I'm adding an entry for Oracle DT. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm getting adding another entry for Oracle DT. That's a single chain that I'm doing in the SID list. I'm specifying the third standby. Then I'll move on to TNS names dot aura file. I'll move to TNS. Oh God. Let me go to TNS names and let me add an entry for Oracle DT. So that is the entry for Oracle DT. So I have added the entry for Oracle DT. So before before moving to the next part, what I will do is I will show you both of these files once again. So this is how my TNS names dot aura file looks like. So let me do this outside. Let me clear the screen. And if you can see, I have added the entry for Oracle DT, the listener entry. And here is the TNS names dot aura, aura entry. So I have added those entries for our uh, new database which we are going to create or restore then also i'll show you the listener dot aura file and that looks like something like this so in the seed list i have added the new database oracle dt in the seed list of the listener so that is been done and now if i clear my screen and show you lsnr ctl status I got only Oracle DP and Oracle DS. I will now restart my listener to, for the new settings to take place. So let me just start, stop and show you the status and I should see Oracle DT appearing. So let me clear the screen and let me do all of these things. So I'm stopping. The first command is stop. The second command is start. And then finally, I will be showing you the status of my listener once it gets successfully started. So let me clear my screen and if you can see I got Oracle DP, Oracle DS and Oracle DT. So I got all of these three uh, right now connected, uh, sorry configured. So I, I my TNS names dot and uh, sorry listener dot aura entry is been done. So next step what we'll do is like we'll be copying this init Oracle DP file into this particular file. So let me go to this particular location and show you whether I have got this particular file. So clear the screen, CD to that location, ls minus L. And as, a, as you can see, let me clear and it. Uh, so if you can see, I don't have the init Oracle DT dot aura. Neither I have the password file for Oracle DT. So I don't have the, those two. So let me click copy the password file. So copy the password file. So copy the password file as Oracle DT. And let me copy this uh, primary, the init Oracle primary as Oracle DT. So that's done. So now if I clear the screen and show you, I have got the init file and I have got the password file. The init file is copy of the 
primary init file so that's what i have done so now let me edit this particular file and i'll show you what edit we are going to do so what we are going to do in that particular file is wherever there is the occurrence of oracle dp i'm just going to change it with oracle dt so let me take that particular file name clear my screen and edit the oracle init file for the third standby and as i said wherever there is an entry for oracle dp we will be changing that to oracle dt so that's what we are going to do so that's done if you see oracle dt everywhere you can see oracle dt so wherever there was oracle dp we change it to oracle dt so let me save this then what we what we need to do is we need to also edit our etc aura tab to add an entry for the new database so let me add that so we have got oracle db so let's add the third standby oracle dt entry into etc or our tab so we are set now we are ready for our restore part so what before restoring we need to use the newly created p file to start up the database in no mount mode so we will be starting the database in no mount mode and while we will be starting the new database the third standby into no mount mode for the restore we will be starting it with the p file that we just created this p file was actually the copy of the primary p file if you see we copied the init p file into this and once we edited this particular file we replaced oracle dp with oracle dt so that's what we have done so now I will be starting this new third standby into no mount mode for the restore. So let's do that. So let me take it here, clear my screen and do aura in V and I'll say Oracle DT. So that's that's done. And now what I'll do is I'll start my database into no mount mode. So idle instance starting the using this particular init oracle dt database I am starting my uh, I'm starting my third standby and once I've started I'll show you the parameters using show parameter name so I have started oracle dt so that's done so and it is currently started in no mount mode using the p file that we just created so now let me exit and connect to the rman session and as I said when we connect to the rman your target will be your primary while your auxiliary will be your third standby the database that we are going to restore so take this particular command and let me go before before launching the rman i just want to show you the restore script so this is what we will be using the script this is the rman script that we will be using to restore or I can just copy paste this particular command uh, to restore. So what, what we will be doing is we will be using this particular command, uh, this particular file to restore the rman databases. So the third standby, so we will be using this. So what I'll do is I will, as I said, the primary has to be connected as target and the third standby has to be connected as auxiliary. So let's do that and let's see okay it doesn't matter so let me do that and the connected target database and connected auxiliary and the third standby is currently in no mount mode and let me take this entirely and if you see we are using duplicate target database for standby and we are doing the conversion the control file and all that stuff and we are going to restore into this particular location and as i say exit out of here and clear my screen and go to that particular location and show you that there is absolutely nothing so let me hit this restore command into my rman session and if if everything goes fine the the database oracle dt will be restored in this particular location so let's wait for the restore to begin and looks like the restore is happening in the background so let's wait uh, for it to restore the first file then we will see the files appearing here just give it a minute for that particular section to come once the restore is done what we will be doing i'll show you while it is getting restored so oracle restore start connected to auxiliary database not started so it's 
doing all of this in the background. Oracle is started. Okay. Restore. Starting. Mount standby. And it looks like it has started the restoring data file 001. So if I hit LS minus L here, I can see control file got restored and the first system database system table space is also restored. So if you can see here restoring now it has gone to Sysox. So if I do LS minus L, it has started restoring the Sysox. If you can see Sysox here, you can see the restore. So restore is happening. So while the restore is happening, I'll show you what we need to do. The next part is what I'll do is I'll go to this data card and we need to configure some of the parameters in the standby. So if I show you this particular script, you will see what I, what, what we are doing is once what we'll be adding the standby redo logs, we'll be adding the standby redo logs into the third standby. We will be setting up our the destination log arc dash one parameter, log arc dash two parameter. Then we'll be enabling those two parameters, and we will be changing the log arc config parameters to dg config, and we'll be setting the file client and file server and service names. So we will be doing literally all of this, and I'll show you all of these parameters once everything is done. How my most important is this log arc config. Now that dg config parameter contains all of this, and as I said, once all my data guard is set up, I'll show you the file client and file server on all three databases. So you can have a look of what we have done. So in this particular script, once the restore is completed, once the restore is completed, yeah, the restore is completed. Once the restore is completed, we will be executing the script to create the SLRs, setting the log arc dash one, log arc dash two. Then we will be setting the log arc config, file client, file server. So we'll be doing all of this. So let's save this particular script and let me connect to let me connect to the new standby that we just created. Oracle DT and just execute that particular script. And we are good to go. So let's do that. So it's, it's going to change those parameters as mentioned in that particular file. So it's going to alter the database and it's going to start and stop the database. And finally, I, I should have showed it to you. Finally, it's going to start is going to start the MRP alter database recover manage database. So if I show you this, finally is going to do this. So it's going to start the MRP. So if everything goes fine, we will have our third stand standby in the in the in not in the data guard broker configuration, but in the data guard configuration. So let's wait for it to finish. What's doing? So it has added all these redo log files. Looks like the standby little log already exists. So that's fine. That's fine. Then that's fine. That's fine. Okay. So while it is doing that, let me clear the screen. And as I showed you initially, let me connect here and show my configuration. So I have got only two databases. So I got Oracle DP and Oracle DS. So once this particular database is created and we have that database is already created and we have configured all those parameters and we have configured into it is in the MRP. We have enabled the MRP process. I'll add that particular database into my data guard broker. So let's wait for it to start the MRP. So switch over status, physical standby, Oracle DT. So we got the third one and everything seems to be applied. So we got the third standby now. So let's now add that into our data guard environment. So let me clear the screen. Maximize this. Show configuration. And we got 
Oracle DP is primary. Oracle DS is physical standby. Let's add Oracle DT, the second physical standby that we just restored and changed some of the parameters. So how do we do that? So to do that, we will be adding the database. Add database Oracle DT as connected in fair Oracle DT maintain as physical. So let's try doing that. And it says log arc dash one is set. So let's actually do one thing. Let's reset that parameter. The second parameter reset it on the new standby. Third standby reset that parameter. Once we reset it, let's hit the same command which failed. The Oracle DT added. So previously it failed. Now it has successful. What we did to fix this is we resetted this log arc dash two parameter, and then we were able to add this particular database. So let's now show you the configuration. So I got Oracle initially. I got Oracle DP and Oracle DS. And I got now Oracle DP as primary, Oracle DS as physical standby. So that's this is exactly the same. Oracle DT, this particular database is added into configuration, but I have not done the enable part of the configuration. Before enabling, I'll change this sync mode for the new database. So let me update the sync mode, and also I will be adding this static connect identifier for this particular database to reflect that it is oracle dt connected to oracle dt so this particular parameter helps us in case of switch over so let's add that particular parameter that's done now let's do let's enable the configuration let's enable the configuration and once enable the configuration i'll just show you the show configuration And if everything goes fine, then this particular error message it shows enabled. If everything goes fine, this particular error message would go away, and multiple warnings detected for the member. So let's give it a minute. Let's wait for this 30 seconds and see if those warnings go away. So just give it a minute and see if those warnings are still there. And I believe those warnings will be still there because what we have not done is like. In the primary side, if you see the primary, we have not added the new uh, parameter. So let's wait and see if those warnings are going or they are not going. So let's give it a minute. Not a minute, actually. F let's wait for it to refresh. After six, normally it will get refreshed after 60s. Uh, after every 60 seconds. So 53 right now. So let me clear the screen. And I still have multiple warnings updated 58 seconds. So let's okay. And after the refresh happened, if you see the refresh has happened, and this particular part, which was multiple warnings detected for the member, that has gone. And now I can see that I got Oracle DP as primary, Oracle DS as my first standby, and Oracle DT as my second standby. So I got multiple standbys. And if I show you, that was my aim. When I started, I had this configuration, and now I have got another database as standby in my data guard broker. So looks like everything is good. So what we will do now is before before showing you that really everything is good, I just want to show you how my parameters, the log arc config, and my the fail server parameter looks on all the nodes. So I just want to show you those three parameters. So that you have idea, and I'll copy the, those parameters into this particular text file. So let's go on the first primary. Let's go on the first primary, and let me connect as sysdba. And so this is important. Once you figured out how to set up the log arc config and fail client and fail server, rest all parameters are really this. This this is where you need to be careful of how you set up your. Log our config and fail client and fail server in multiple standby. So let's let me show you to you those two parameters on both the on all the three databases. And I'm going to show I'm going to keep a note. So clear. So this is my primary. 
so this is my primary oracle dp this is my primary and what i'll do is i'll take this particular command paste it here so if you see my dg config now contains p s and t so this is how my dg config looks like and let's let me show you my fail parameters on the primary so i got on the primary oracle dp as my fail so let me keep a note of this so this is how my parameter looks on the primary so so on the primary primary oracle dp so this is how it looks like i'll i'll format this and i'll show it to you how they look yeah so now what i'll do is i'll go to the second standby let me exit and let me do ori env and go to my second standby and connect as systb clear my screen okay so i was doing it here actually so let me do it here exit clear and ori env and connect to my second standby and connect as sysdba and show you these two parameters how it looks on oracle ds so before that show parameters name so we are on oracle ds so we are on oracle ds so let me show this parameter so if you see the dg config now contains all three databases and if i show you the fail parameters over here you can see the fail client is oracle ds which is the same instance and the file server is oracle dp and oracle dt so let me keep a note of this and this is the configuration on first and by oracle ds so let me first stand by oracle ds so this is how it looks on the first and by and if i go on the third stand by so let me clear my screen do or env and this time choose oracle dt which is my second standby or third database and connect as sysdba show parameter name to make sure we are on the oracle dt so we are on oracle dt and let me show you those two parameters on oracle dt as well so let me clear the screen and let me show you the fail parameter and take a note of this and this is my configuration on the third standby second standby or third database oh god where did i paste okay so now let me format this use the courier name font make it bold make it 10 and format all of these lines this is not required so let me just remove all of this part okay so this is my primary so let me make it 15 let me format this this is my first standby and this is my second standby okay so if you see the parameters okay i need to still reduce the font size to make it nine okay so if i if i show you the parameters on my primary and let me get rid of this okay this is my first standby 
and this is my second standby and if you can see the it's all about this fail parameters so if you can get your fail parameters right and the log r dash one parameters so if you see the dg config on all three databases now contains the same database oracle dp oracle ds oracle ds or here oracle ds being the first oracle dp oracle dt and then oracle dt oracle dp so if you see the dg config now contains all three databases and if you see on the primary my file server is oracle dp on the standby oracle ds oracle dp oracle dt and oracle dt so if you get this right if you get this file and log our config database then you should you will be able to add the standby into your database so what we did we created copy the p file from the primary we edited the p file parameter we started the database in no mount mode we perform we did the rmn active duplication then we use the rmn duplicate target database for standby then we created the standby control file we changed some of the data guard parameters we set up the data dg broker start we change this particular parameter in the block broker configuration we change the static connect identifier and then we were able to enable so before doing that let me go back to my data guard broker and we have not after adding this we have not done any testing so let's do some kind of testing as well just to make sure that everything is looking good so so let's do some kind of testing so what i'll do is i'll go to my So let me launch three sessions. Yeah, so let me launch three sessions. So let me launch. Okay, so let me clear this. Clear this and clear this. And the first this is oracle dp so if i show you my aura env this is my oracle dp this is my oracle ds and this is my oracle dt so i got oracle dp on the first screen on the second screen oracle ds and on the third screen oracle dt and right now the oracle dp is my primary while oracle ds and oracle dt are my standbys so let's do thing so let me connect to my primary and let me show you the records which are there in this particular table select star from test one so this is the records what i'll do is like i'll delete this 85 and 88 the india grade i'll delete this 85 and 88 from this test one so let me delete from test one where c1 in 85 and 88 so let's me let me delete these two records that's done let me commit these two records and let's see whether that particular delete is now replicated so i got six records here and i got six records here so let's looks looks like whatever delete i did not show you the records previously and i deleted it thinking okay so let's do one thing now uh, let me show you that now all the tables contain six records so six six and six and we don't have this 85 and 88 so we don't have these two records so let me actually do one thing let me show you one script called this where it's going to insert those, those two records that we just deleted so 85 and 88 is going to add this india grade record 
into the primary and once it is added let's see whether it is coming on oracle ds and oracle dt so let's see whether we are able to actually um, see the records flowing from primary to first standby as well as the second standby so let's do that so as usual i want to show you that i am on primary let me clear the screen and let me take this particular name of the script clear my screen connect as sysdba on the primary and before inserting select star from test one and i should have six records and here there is six records and here there are six records so let me add run that particular script to add those two records so now from six i got eight the 85 and 88 got added so now let's run that particular command here to see whether we got so we had six and we got eight and as usual i am on oracle ds and let's see if if i run the same query on oracle dt if i can show you that i'm on oracle dt and if i run that same script on from six i got eight so looks like my data guard replication between the primary and the two standbys the oracle ds and oracle dt is working so finally what i need to show you to you is my switch over so we have already seen the switch over between oracle ds from oracle dp so in this tutorial what we will do we will make oracle dt as primary and we will uh, we will check whether we are good with our new standby taking the role as the new primary so oracle dt we will make primary so oracle ds and oracle dp will be new standbys while oracle dt will be new primary so if it doesn't work i i'll have to fix something but let's see switch over to oracle dt so let's see whether the switch over is happening and if everything goes fine everything goes fine then we should be able to see that oracle dp is the new standby oracle ds is existing standby while oracle dt is primary so oracle dp will become standby oracle dt will become primary while oracle ds will remain as standby so let's see and let's wait for the switch over to happen and oracle dt to take over as new primary So it's doing this part. It's going to take some time because it's going to switch the roles. So it's going to take some time. Switch over succeeded. New primary is Oracle DT. So now let me launch the new duplicate session. Connect as Oracle. So I just want to show you the reference. This part and the new script. I just want to show it to you. Set my Oracle environment. So that's done. And connect to the data guard broker and show you the configuration after the switch over. So if you see here, my Oracle DP is primary. Here, my Oracle DT is primary. Oracle DS is still standby. Oracle DP is physical standby. So now I got which Oracle DT, which was the physical standby, is now the the primary Oracle DT. So if you see here, okay, what I'll do is I'll just put it here and here. So if you if you see the Oracle DP was primary, now Oracle DT is primary, and Oracle DS was physical standby it is still physical standby while oracle dp was primary now it is physical standby so we we have been able to do the switch over also that also worked and i can one more time try to do the switch over to oracle ds and i, I hope that will also work because everything looks good so these are the parameters most important parameters if you figure this right the dg config parameter and the file server and file client and then the log arc config parameters then you can add as many and standbys as you want provided you don't reach the oracle limit of number of standbys 
I don't remember. I don't know the number of limit. What is the number of limit in Oracle 19C? I don't know how many standbys are supported by Oracle 19C. But in this particular tutorial, we were able to add the second standby into our data guard configuration. Already we had this particular databases and we were able to. So what we this is where I would just repeat. This is exactly what you need to see. And if you get this right, if you get this thing right, this these three parameters get get this right and log arc config one log arc config, log arc dash one log arc dash two and log arc dash three if you get that right and those parameters you will find so many tutorials on how to configure the two standbys and but you will find sorry you will find lot of configure articles online on how to set up the one primary one standby but you will not find lot of articles on the second standby so this was my video on how to set up the multiple standbys in oracle 19c data guard environment so and not only we added we also did the switch over and we were able to add that particular database into our data guard broker configuration i hope this tutorial was useful thank you for watching see you in next video bye bye